Thank you for joining us on the uh, passive Aggressive. accredited invest. Stop it. <laughs> passive accredited investor show. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, I go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're an accredited investor and you're looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Um, it's spooky. <laughs> We have a uh, chat section, so you can ask questions. Uh, it's either going to be on the right side of your screen or underneath, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. And once again, since this is the month of November and it's all about women, take it away, Wendy. Thank you. But you know what? Every day is all about women. That's yep, true. absolutely. It, yeah, it doesn't just have to be the month of November, right? We just, yeah. <laughs> Folks, I am so honored to be able to welcome one of my dear, dear friends. And that I always describe her as the, the smartest chick I know. And she is. Um, lightning Mary, lips. Yeah, lightning lips, <laughs> Mary Hart. <laughs> that lightning lips haunts me every time. <laughs> You'll never get away with. Sorry, I keep reminding folks. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Mary, thank you so much for agreeing to be on our show today. We're so thrilled to have you. And, I, you know, I love you. You're such a dear friend. I love going to any event that I know you're going to be at, not only because I get to spend time with you, um, but also because I learn something new from you every time I talk to you. Aww, it blows my thank mind. You. You've thank just you. got all this information that flows out and drops on people's shoes and <laughs> well, it is a little hard to keep my mouth shut sometimes. So I'm hoping only good things fly out. That's good. <laughs> so I know there's, there's people on here that are going to go lightning lips. Where did that come from? You've got to oh, share boy. it for just a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, I tend to talk very fast and the more excited and passionate I get about something, I talk even faster. And when I was a baby attorney practicing in Alaska, I was on a telephonic hearing with a judge in Ketchikan. I was in Juneau and the client was somewhere else. Anyway, I got very excited, talked very quickly. And the judge said on the record, whoa, there, lightning lips. If you think my puny brain can possibly keep up with your mouth, you're crazy. And I never lived it down. And that was 30 years ago. So there you go. Lightning lips. I just love it. I love it. And when you present, you talk fast too, because you've got so much information you need to share. I know I'm trying to work on slowing that down. It's really hard because I think I'm going really slow. And then I see the video and I'm like, oh my God, I can't even understand myself. I'm so fast. So I'll try to go slow. I'll try well, to tone it down. When it, even when it's fast, it's you just want to grab a hold and hang on because it's always great information. The you know deal maker se session this past, um, what month was that? September? Was September. Yeah, September. Yeah. You were the keynote speaker. It was just a wonderful presentation. Everybody talked about it just Thank constantly you. the rest of the weekend. It was, it was just awesome. wonderful. Thank and you. you're going to do it again coming up in 2022. Yeah. Keynote again in March. And we're going to talk about building a legacy and what that means and probably get into some practical aspects of the financial legacy, the estate planning piece, if we have time as well. Yeah. Yes. And I'll it's tell great. you what I love hearing from you too, is the love letter that you put out. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that love letter? Well, I've always just said that your estate plan is your ultimate love letter, because if you put everything in place so that when you die or become disabled, your loved ones can just go about the business of grieving and remembering you and not having to deal with all the crud that comes along with administering an estate that has not been well planned, that is the ultimate love letter. It's not just the money you leave them or the stuff you leave them. It's the peace of mind that they're following your wishes. You've put everything in place. It's easy to follow. Everybody knows what they're doing and you just make it as seamless as possible for your loved ones. And what would otherwise be a very time consuming, tedious, um, horrible situation in most cases. So yeah. that's the ultimate love letter plan, plan. 
So when people don't use that ultimate love letter, what are some of the things that they can look forward to if they haven't mm -hmm. used it? <laughs> well, first of all, if you if you've not done a will, let's just talk about the death for a moment and then we'll maybe talk about disability. But if you die without at least a will, the legislature has created a will for you for any asset that you own in your separate name at the time of your death. The legislature has created a will for you. It may not leave your assets to the people that you would want to receive your assets. And it certainly may not leave it to them in the manner in which you would want them to inherit it. It does not appoint the executor for you of your choice. It has a list of people, you know, a hierarchy of who would be chosen to be your executor or what we call a personal representative in North Carolina. Um, and that may or may not be the person you want to handle your things. Not only that, that executor would then have to post a bond money out of their own pocket that they have to post with the court to make sure they don't run off with your estate. So <laughs> it, it's tedious. It's very tedious. You have to go through a probate if you die with assets in your own name. And there are just a lot of steps that we could avoid if, if necessary, if things were set up properly. So, you know, you, you might encourage family fights. There's so many things that can go wrong if you don't take control and plan your own death or disability. And, you know, what, what I want to tell people is that a lot of people don't want to plan because it's morbid, right? You're talking right. about if you're disabled or you're dead, who wants to talk about that? That's awful. <laughs> but what I like to say is you, you're really taking control and it's, it's talking about how you maintain dignity and control when things out of your control happen to you, disability or death. How do you maintain control and have things go as seamlessly as possible whether it's making decisions for you when you're disabled or taking care of your estate and your loved ones when you're deceased. And it's, if, if people think of it that way, then I can get them to the table more easily back when I was a, an estate planning lawyer. And uh, you know, people think, well, if I do my estate plan, I'm going to die. And I think, no, Murphy's law says if you're prepared, nothing's going to happen to you. Right? <laughs> you prepare, yeah. You're going to get a hit by the bus, but let's prepare. And then you can, then you can go to sleep every night, knowing it's all taken care of and you just get to hang out with your family and enjoy your family and friends and not worry about it anymore. That's right. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah. We have a question yeah, Brian. from um, <clears throat> Brian has a question. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull it up here in just a second. There, you, there go. you go. Yeah. If you have properties in several States, do you re recommend putting each property into its own LLC or one LLC to cover them all? Is there a state that you recommend that is friendlier or more effective for real estate holdings for an LLC yeah. creation? So that's several questions in one, but let's, let's cover it. <laughs> <That's> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's several, several considerations there. Oftentimes I will tell people to put, if you buy property in, in whatever state, say North Carolina, use a North Carolina LLC. If you're in Virginia, use a Virginia LLC. You don't have to do it that way. Um, and there are states that are friendlier to the business owners in other states, states like Nevada, Wyoming, Delaware. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily necessary to go to one of those states. Um, in terms of more than one LLC, a lot of my former clients would decide how many LLCs based on the equity exposed in any one LLC. So let's say you had 10 houses and your equity was only $100,000 because you had 10,000 in each house, maybe you don't care if $100,000 chunk is exposed in one LX LLC to potential liability. But let's say those 10 houses each had $100,000 of equity. Now you've got a million dollars exposed in one LLC. And if someone can break into the LLC, now all your properties are potentially exposed. So I, I like to do mine based on the state of location and the amount of equity I'm exposing to liability. So, you know, that's a real personal decision what you do because the more LLCs, the more fees you have every year, the more tedious it is to maintain, the more books and records you have. And, and so it's a balancing act and everybody will fall differently in that, that continuum of fewer LLCs, fewer tediousness, less protection to the far end of the uh, spectrum of more LLCs, more fees, more tediousness, more protection, where you fall on that continuum is a very personal choice. And then what states do you think are, are better for LLC? Yeah. Well, bet, yeah, better, better, is a, better is a different, you know, better is one word. Is it better? It really depends on your situation. What? <laughs> this, yeah. The states that tout themselves as very, um, 
owner friendly, you know, the people who own the LLCs uh, are usually Delaware, Nevada, Wyoming, um, Tennessee, maybe New Mexico. I'm trying to remember, you know, I haven't looked at it in a while because I haven't practiced law in a while, but those are theoretically better for, for the owner in terms of the protections for the owner that they tout themselves as better. But again, look, you have to look at each personal situation and look at the laws in that state and say, do I really need that one extra little provision that maybe Delaware gives me? Most cases, no. Um, some states will offer a series LLC and people like those where you have one master LLC and you open up all these little baby LLCs under it, but it all flows up into one tax return and things like that. But you can do almost the equivalent of a series LLC in states that don't have that, but you're just going to pay a few more fees. So you just have to look at the law and, and meet with a trusted advisor that can look at your individual situation and help you weigh the pros and cons of, of going to these different states. And, and I'll say one more thing. Some of these companies that promote, uh, hey, come to, I'm just picking a state, come to Nevada and we'll set up all these LLCs for you and we'll charge you $25,000, but you'll have the best thing since sliced bread. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think a lot of that's a ripoff. Right. So I right. would go to an advisor in your state, talk to them about what your state laws, you know, provide for you and whether it's necessary to go do other states or not. That's a yeah. great point. That's a great point. Yeah. And as, as for like sheltering real, <coughs> real estate is, would you recommend LLCs or trusts or, or corporations or is, you know, is it just kind of like a pick your, pick your poison what's best for you kind of thing? Uh, it's not a pick your poison always because there are some more black and white rules with that. Mm -hmm. So one black and white rule is in general, you never want to own real estate in a corporation. Okay? okay. And that is because there's tax basis rules and all this that make it difficult to get the property out without tax consequences. So if you're buying, say, like single family rentals, you probably want to uh, want to own those in an LLC um, because of the tax laws and the, the beefed up creditor protection. If you're doing lots and lots and lots of deals, some people will use land trusts. So they buy one property and one land trust and then have the beneficiary of multiple land trusts be one LLC or, you know, say like for every five land trusts, you have one LLC, what, whatever it is, you have to decide the numbers. The other black and white rule though with land trust is that people think they're a creditor protected asset um, entity and they're not. They're, they can provide a smoke screen. They can make it harder for a potential creditor to find you. They can make it more difficult for a plaintiff's attorney to have any idea how to deal with a land trust. But in and of themselves, they provide no creditor protection like an LLC does. So for instance, if I had a house in a land trust and someone slipped and fell in that house and sued the land trust, if they want a judgment, they could get the equity in that house in that land trust. If I took that same house and I had it in an LLC and they sued the LLC and won, what they would get in most, if, if not all states, is a particular type of judgment called a charging order, which puts that creditor in my shoes in terms of benefits of the LLC, but also burdens of the LLC. So for instance, let's say I had a house, it's owned in an LLC, my tenant slips and falls, they sue my LLC, they win, they get a charging order against my LLC. That does not give them the availability to, or the ability to step in and manage my LLC. They can't dictate that I liquidate any assets in that LLC. They can't demand a distribution. Now, if my LLC decides to make a distribution to its members, to me, then the creditor stands there with their hands out like Oliver Twist and that distribution <laughs> gets plopped into their hands. You know, please, sir, may I have some more? But they don't get to demand that. And so if I'm the manager of my own LLC, I just say, well, we're not making any distributions this year. And so the creditor stands there with their empty hands. And that may be okay to the creditor, except it's a pass through entity. And so what happens? Any income that LLC makes gets passed through to the members to go on their tax return, right? So if my LLC made $100,000 in income and that creditor has just stepped into my shoes for benefits and burdens, what do they get? A tax bill. Now they have to report and pay the, the tax on the $100,000 worth of income, even though they got no distribution. So creditors don't like that. And if I, as the manager of the LLC said, 
said, hey, you know what? This LLC is having a capital call and all members need to kick in $100,000 to pay for operations. Guess what? That creditor needs to pony up $100,000 because they step, step, uh, stepped into my shoes for benefits and burdens. So creditors don't like it. They're always looking for a way around it. And the only way they usually can get around that is if you have either not set up your LLC properly or you have not managed it properly. You've commingled your money with your personal stuff. You haven't adequately capitalized your LLC, meaning you haven't funded it enough, things like that. But if it's set up properly, managed properly, then it tends to have a good creditor protection um, veil that a land trust will never have. Land trust just counts on smoke and mirrors and hey, hey, you can't find me. <laughs> but if you find, yeah, right. find you, you know, they got you, right? So if you use a land trust, by the way, the benefits of it are you can do a lot of deals with a lot of flexibility and you can move fast because you're not setting up 100 LLCs. You're not having to deal with the state. You're not paying all the fees. Uh, so you can move fast and you have a lot of flexibility. You lose some creditor protection. But one thing everybody should do if they use a land trust is never name themselves as an individual beneficiary of that mm -hmm. land trust. The beneficiary should always be their LLC or maybe it's a, a personal property trust. And then that beneficiary is an LLC, you know, stack up your layers to make it harder and harder for a creditor to pierce that smoke screen to find you. Right. Do you, I don't know saying. if our viewers know how much people have paid for that information that you just shared. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I, I learned. Yeah. I learned yeah. that today. Yeah. I had no idea that it was yeah. for the burdens as well as the benefit. Right. Well, my wow. hourly rate when I do consulting now is $500 an hour. So how many minutes was that? How much, how much work did you get? <laughs> but the real value is how much money did I just save you? That's exactly <laughs> what my hourly rate right. is, but what exactly. did I save you in litigation costs and everything else? So that's really what you look at. That's exactly, exactly, right. exactly right. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of people don't look at things that way. Right. I was always under the impression that the, the land trust is basically a way to keep the ambulance chasers from pursuing you because it's too much trouble. Uh, that, and they that, will just yeah. move on to, you know, uh, lower, lower hanging, hanging fruit. fruit. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, as our buddy Jeff Watson says all the time, you know, plaintiff's attorneys are looking for low hanging fruit. And so the more difficult you make it for them to find you and the hoops to jump through, the less likely they are to pursue a lawsuit. So that's what I mean by smoke screen. You make it harder but the entity, the trust itself does not provide any actual creditor protection by law. It just makes mm -hmm. it harder. Um, but what I, what I think of any asset protection, creditor protection, uh, and people who've heard me speak have heard me say this, I think of it as layers of an onion. So the mm -hmm. first layer should be, be a good steward of your property. You know, keep the common areas well lit, keep the ice off the sidewalk, make sure the electrical wiring is not frayed. You know, all the things that make you a good landlord, for instance. You're in the Fill in the swimming pool. <laughs> right. That kind of thing. Reduce your liability by being a good steward of the property. The second layer of the onion is to have the best insurance you can afford because mm. those, those uh, plaintiff's lawyers who like the low hanging fruit, the easiest thing for them to do is go after a good insurance policy and keep you out of it. And your insurance uh, company defends you. And on that vein, not only the best insurance you can afford, but you've got to make sure it's the right type of coverage and the right amount of coverage. So if you've got a vacation rental, you need a different insurance than somebody that's just a landlord on a single family rental. If it's a commercial policy, it's different. If it's a, a rehab, it's different policy. If it's a vacant single family rental, it's a different policy. So you've got to talk to your insurance people and make sure you've got the right type of policy for your situation. You've got an adequate amount of coverage and then you probably should have an umbrella policy that's cheap to get, but that covers things that your other policy might not cover, e excess coverage kind of policy. So, and then the third layer of the onion becomes entities, trusts, LLCs, things like that. And wow. that it's an, see, I told you, she's just the smartest chick I know. <laughs> so here's, here's what else me. I think, here's what I think is so cool about you too. Not only are you a total brainiac, but you're always on the cutting edge. You're the first person I ever met that was actually a short-term vacation rental host. True. And, True. and so much of what I do today on that short term is, is what I've learned from you. 
and and you uh, you pushed me into it actually, and I thank you for I that. Yeah, I remember. And I mean, I started being a short term rental host in two thousand and six or seven, way before, before I even anybody knew. knew anybody did it. The yeah. only reason I did it is because I had a building I wanted to be able to use on the weekends because I was newly divorced. And when I didn't have my kids, I wanted to go into downtown Asheville and play a little bit. And this was a beautiful, you know, couple of loft apartments in downtown Asheville. And I was like, well, I can't long term rent them or I won't be able to use them. So I thought, well, let's just try it like a hotel and darn if it didn't work. And then I went on to get more and inspire people like you who have way outstripped me, by the way. You know, I'm just clicking along with three or four at this point. But, you know, I sold a bunch of them and. Now I just got not nearly as many as you do, but anyway. well, um, I, I love the short term rentals too, but now, now I'm kind of hankering for the self storage thing. So yeah, that's, 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 that's something I'm looking into too. That and notes are my, my things I want to look at next. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can help you with the note side for sure. <laughs> well, I already do the private lending, but now I'm talking right. about buying long-term mortgage notes. So you were just at, at uh, note school, weren't you? At I the went note to note expo and then I just that. took their, for the second time, their three day live class. It was virtual this time. Um, got my stepson involved in it. And now several other of our adult children are looking into it. So we might try to start a little family company and, and uh, buy some notes. We'll see. Oh, Excellent. that's a, that's a great idea. That's yeah. a, that's awesome. I see note investing tool says hi. Yeah. Hi Tracy and Fred. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I just sent my kids all the link to you. So I mean, you're training, so you might be hearing from them. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really awesome. There was one more thing. Oh yeah. Talk about Mondays with Mary. I think this is okay. the greatest, the greatest thing on earth that you're doing. I love it. Well, talking about, I might have inspired you for short-term rentals, but you inspired me with your Wednesdays with Wendy. It turned into my Mondays with Mary. I love it. <laughs> Basically, you know, what it is, I'll tell you what it is and I'll tell you how it came about really. What it is, is um, you can sign up. Anybody can sign up for free for on Mondays. I have four slots for individual 30 minute coaching sessions. So that's a $250 value right there per person. And then at three o'clock by popular demand, I had to add on a group coaching call for people who either wanted to just be voyeurs because they didn't really have a question, but they wanted to see what everybody else's question is, <laughs> or they just don't know enough to know what to ask yet, or they're too scared to you know get one-on-one. -on -one. So we do the group coaching call at three o'clock and we do uh, individuals on Mondays. It, when I decided to do it, partly is because you inspired me, Wendy, but I decided to take the leap because frankly, I'd gotten a little bored. I mean, I love my life. I love my husband. We have fun, but my brain is always moving along at a thousand mile an hour clip. And I was like, okay, how many books can I read in a day? How many walks can I take the dog? All right. I, I need a, I need a passion project. So I decided to do that and I just threw it up on a post on Facebook and within 24 hours, I was booked for two months solid. <laughs> So I'm like, yes, there's a need out there. When are you next available? Because I want to talk to you about <laughs> wills and trusts. Yeah. So they just flashed up the link, but it's calendly.com slash Mondays with Mary, all written together. Calendly.com slash Mondays with Mary. And you can go in and there are two different ways you can schedule. There's the, it will say Q&A individual or Q&A group. So you just have to go in and find what slots are available and sign up. And you get reminders. Wendy told me about that. You know, Calendly sends you reminders. So hopefully I won't get too many no shows. I've had a few, but they forget. But anyway, <laughs> that's how you do it. It's pretty easy. That's awesome. Yeah. That we, we have that over in the chat as well. So if you're viewing and you okay. just want to uh, be able to uh, click it on, uh, you can do that very easily. Yep. Yeah, that's so awesome. I, I, I just love that you're doing that. And um, I, and what was really funny is when you first posted it on Facebook, I think the whole world went, Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it, you, you just have such a great following and, and what a great, awesome way to give back. Um, well, what, what I love about it for me is it runs the gamut of investors. So on, on one Monday, last Monday, you know, I've got a husband and wife that own 40 rentals. They've been investing for a long time. And, um, you know, I was able to answer a lot of their questions. And then my next caller was a, a, a 20 year old college student raring to go. And I answered all her questions and then sent her a book list with things highlighted. And she was just so excited and so thankful. And 
that makes me feel so good because so many people have mentored me and helped me and inspired me that if I can give that back for just even a few hours every week, I, I, that's awesome. That's awesome to me. And it's, it's, I'm actually working on a, uh, I'm not going to say much about it yet because I'm going to launch it in Jim's event in March, but um, at Dealmaker Live 2022, but I'm working on a mentoring program that'll be, um, you know, more involved and, and more than just Q and A, but literally, you know, helping people, work towards their financial freedom. So we're working yeah, on it. And you need to do that. I, I've heard you talk about doing yeah. that for years. It's, it's been a calling for years, but by gosh, that knocking on the door is so darn loud right now that I can't even sleep at night because that, <laughs> that calling is knock, knock, knock. We've been asking for this for years. You know, whatever higher power wants me to do this is being yeah, very insistent. Yeah. That's so, awesome. so, my, so we're working last, on it. My last question for you is yes. how is Kentucky living uh, doing Good, for you? Kentucky living is great. Um, and, you know, Wendy's the, I won't call her the grandmama of my baby dog because Wendy and I are the same age, but, <laughs> same way, but, you know, we got one of the great Pyrenees puppies from uh, Wendy, yeah. Hank the Tank, we call him. And Hank is probably pushing close to 200 pounds now, Wendy, at least 180. The wow, sweetest, boy. most wonderful dog. He will not come inside at night because he wants to guard his flock, which is Frank and me. And so he, he walks around the perimeter of our house all night long, growling and barking and making sure everything's OK. So we just put a heat lamp outside on the deck for him because he won't come inside. And it's like 25 degrees at night. But uh, the farm is great. You might have seen on Facebook. We had the jailbreak the other day where the other guardian dogs and the goats broke out of the fence and come trotting around the barn. And we're like, that was cute. Where did that come from? <laughs> so anyway, we got we got them back in. Um, chickens have slowed down on laying of the eggs. So we're fixing up their coop and making it all cozy for the winter. And yeah, it's great. You know, we, we love it. We love it. That's so fun. I see Ginger Lacey just said hello. Oh yeah. I saw that too. <laughs> Ginger says, I love Hank the tank. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves Hank the tank and he is just the sweetest dog. He stinks to high heaven, but he's sweet. <laughs> so does his mother and father and two yeah. brothers that I still have. <laughs> it's all that hair. I think it just traps every farm smell in it. You can imagine. I'm it like, is. And so I'm glad he doesn't want to sleep inside. Yeah. Well, at 25 degrees is like summer yeah. to him. It's awesome. Oh yeah. He's perfectly happy. He won't even go under the heat lamp. He, he laughs at us like, what is that all about? Come on people. I'm not going under a heat lamp. Give me a break. I'm a Pyrenees for goodness sakes. Throw some hair. Exactly. What's wrong with you people? Now that wimpy cattle dog, she might have to go under the heat lamp, but not me. I'm Hank the Tank, darn it. Anyway, he's a cute boy. That's, right. well, That's right. One of the benefits of where you are is that you're really close to the bourbon. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's true. And in fact, I'm trying to lure my adult sons home for Christmas with a with a party bus to the bourbon trail. Actually, it's great <laughs> yeah. driving because he doesn't drink. So he's our designated driver. He doesn't like bourbon. <laughs> so we're like, all right, come on, boys, come home for the for Christmas and we'll take you to the bourbon trail. So, that's so, awesome. Sweet. That's awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, Thanks for having me. Good. So good to see you. It is. Yeah, you too. Thank you for having me. I sure appreciate it and hope I run into you soon. I know, Wendy, I'll see you in March for sure, but hopefully before yep. then even. Yeah. And yep. then don't and don't forget to sign up Mondays with Mary. Yep. Yes. And I see you're flashing up my website. That's a, yes. an older website that we're in the process of revamping. So it's still up and we've got more things coming. It will look outdated, but more is more is coming. It's just awesome. my person's working on that. You, if many of you go there, that will push her assistant to uh, fix it and make it better. That's right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Definitely. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us on the Passive Accredited Investor Show. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the Apply Now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the Accredited Investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy as well as Mondays with Mary. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have a great day. Talk to you later. Thanks so much.